Wake them up! Hi, how's it going? It's me, Julio. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about something devastating, and uh, it's about Robbie Zachariah and his misconduct, but I, I really want to go over, because by now you would have heard of that, I really want to go over three things that we should all consider after hearing about Robbie Zachariah's misconduct. <laughs> Hi, welcome to our channel on Wake Up, Up Ministry. If you haven't already, please subscribe, please consider it, and also hit the notification button because uh, we're gonna have new and upcoming videos every week, every Thursday, so please join us. Today I wanna talk to you about three things that we should all consider after hearing about Robbie Zacharias misconduct. And first of all, before I even go to those three things, consider this, whenever there's uh, adultery or uh, something involving sexual relations, uh, whether you're a Christian, you know, or not, you know, there's obviously there's there's some issues going on, right? So you could be in jeopardy of losing your marriage. You could be in jeopardy also uh, your testimony, the way you look, you know. So that goes for both, for for non-Christians and Christians. But even more for Christians, you know, it's like uh, do I take what Rabbi Zechariah was teaching? You know, what should I do? You know, he was involved in this, and for how long? And all the details, I don't know it all. You know, I don't think it's it's all out there. But I, I will say this. Listen, we have to look at ourselves and, and say, what could we do to not fall under the same traps? What could we do to not do the same? And so I want you to consider um, these three guardrails that I call. Uh, and what I mean by a guardrail is you think of yourself driving and you think of these guardrails that are there. And usually like if there's a cliff or something, there'll be some guardrails around the side as you're driving. And those guardrails are put in place so that you don't go over or that if, when you tap it a little bit, you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm getting too close to the cliff. And so you don't wanna go over that cliff, you know what I mean? The same thing with the temptations, you know? Um, we, we, we gotta put up some guardrails so that we don't fall over and into temptations like that. And so the first guardrail I wanna go over is possibly considering, and this is something that I practice myself, is um, putting covenant eyes on your devices, whether it be your cell phone, your laptop, um, any devices, iPads and smart, whatever, whatever you got, you know, that could access internet. I really, really want you to consider putting in some type of security like covenant eyes. Um, and so go to covenanteyes.com and you'll be able to see that. But also I, I want to say this too. This is what Jesus says. Okay. Because some people teeter totter about the whole thing about porn. And so is it a sin? Is it not? Is it right? Is it wrong? And so when we look at scripture, what does scripture say about that? Jesus says this on Matthew chapter five, verse 27 and 28 and verse 27, he says, you have heard that it is said to those of old, you must not commit adultery 28. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So Jesus is saying, look, this is not just a physical thing. This is also the inside that God is looking at. And he's looking at your intentions. So if I'm looking with lust, which this is what happened with pornography. Okay, you're looking at someone with lust. Guess what? You committed sin in your heart. That's a big issue. It's a big deal to God. So please, if that's something you're struggling with, and I would say this, if it's been many years that you have not looked at pornography, well, praise God, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're doing very well. Praise the Lord. But if it's under a year, you know, and this is something you keep going back to, please consider the next step. Consider getting um, security software like Covenant Eyes. Also too, what it does is you have people that will hold you accountable. And, and yes, it's weird. It's awkward, you know, definitely for me at first and at times knowing that somebody is going to be viewing, you know, what I'm going on on the internet, but it helps. It helps to alleviate those temptations. It helps to block certain temptations, you know, also too, when you put in certain words on your devices, it'll block it as well. Okay. So I don't know um, how Robbie was, you know, what was going on with him again. But this is something too, if, you know, even the temptations are of, of emailing or texting back and forth with somebody, you know, especially with the opposite sex, especially if it's for your job or work related, you, you want to keep that professional and you want to be careful the kind of words you're using, 
you know, and, and stuff like that. The second thing I want you to consider is being careful with the relationship that you have with the opposite sex. And the reason being is this, all it takes is one time, one slip up, one mistake, you know, in this area, okay? And so we have to be careful. We gotta be on guard on what we say, what we do, and the way we carry these relationships. And so for myself, what I like to practice is if, you know, I, if, if I'm going out on a ride or somebody needs a ride, if it's a woman, uh, I'm not going to do it unless she's like way older than me, uh, unless it's a family member, uh, that's something different. Uh, obviously my wife, I'm going to go, you know, go with my wife anywhere. But if I'm alone, I do not want to give a woman, uh, you know, a ride nowhere because God forbid, you know, maybe miscommunication, maybe something could be said or whatever. You know, so for me personally, I, I put the guardrail that I, I won't give a ride. Also, too, what uh, phone calls. I, I do not usually like texting women or calling. If anything, if, if out of the two, I would rather text also because now there's a record of what's being said. Usually, if I am and there's very few women that I'm texting about uh, something, uh, event that we're doing with evangelism or something like that. And so that's right there. It's documented. Uh, we could go back to it. And stuff like that so you know th there's safeguards that we got to have there's things that we got to do also too when i'm evangelizing and i'm alone uh, i usually like to evangelize um once once a day i reach one person a day at my job and stuff like that and so when i'm on my breaks and my lunch i usually do not like to talk to a woman alone okay and so just because as a precaution you know miscommunication or something could be taken the wrong way or there could be some type of temptation whatever the case uh, usually what I like to do is if there's uh, at least two women or a man and a woman and I love to engage there or when we're out and evangelizing as a team, there's men and women. And so if there's a woman alone, it's OK, because now I'm with two or three or a few Christians and we could go ahead and evangelize. So uh, please use wisdom on that. Number three, I want to say is, you know, consider not traveling alone for certain jobs. That's tough, you know, but for ministry, you know, I'm already said it in my mind, in my heart. Um, usually what I do is uh, I either go with my, my wife or there's other men of God that go with me. I do not want to travel alone, you know, especially uh, distance or far. I don't want to stay in a hotel alone. And I think too, that again, alleviates a uh, big time, uh, you know, big time issues. I believe, you know, that could possibly happen. And this is another thing too. It's real easy. Say you got covenant eyes on your phone. When you're at a hotel, guess what? You got the TV right there or you know, you got computers or whatever that are there and God forbid now those temptations are there too. And, you know, again, this is, if, if this is for me thinking and, you know, coming from my background, uh, these are things that I know that I want to stay away from, you know what I mean? And, and so for me, we have to look at these, uh, possibilities of what can happen and say, Lord, uh, give me the wisdom and let, help me to think about this now because I don't want to fall into temptation and sin. And guys, listen, uh, please, let's pray for each other, especially when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, it could happen to anyone. All right. There's been many pastors, people in the Bible uh, that these things have happened to, you know. And so also, though, I think this is the time we have to take to take into consideration what we can do to stop these things, to prevent these. Also, please leave a comment on some ideas on, you know, what we can do as the body of Christ, what could we do to, you know, prevent some temptations, you know, to put guardrails, what are the guardrails that you think that you have in mind that we could use and tell me, you know, also too, what has worked, what hasn't worked, you know, so please leave a comment about that. Please uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And we thank you for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you in the next video.